Hey everybody, happy Saturday. It's the Darren Clark Real Estate Show. I'm so glad you're tuning in. I'm going to talk a little bit more on Home Buying 101. Uh, we're going over the negotiation process today. Uh, talk about the things that we actually negotiate in a real estate contract. And uh, you may think, oh, well, we're going to figure out the price. But there is so much more than just the price. And that's what we're talking about today. It is negotiation. I am Darren Clark. I am a real estate agent with Century 21 Judge Fight here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Uh, I would love to help you out if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Uh, if you need to get in touch with me, my information is right there. Um, you can call me. You can email me. You can message me here on Facebook or through YouTube or however you feel more, most comfortable getting a hold of me. I look forward to talking to you. All right. So uh, everybody kind of has heard at this point as I'm talking and I talk real estate all the time. Why? I'm a real estate agent, right? So whether it's on the golf course or standing in line at the grocery store, people want to talk real estate. And one thing everybody has noticed is how quickly homes are selling. And when homes are selling as quickly as they are, that means that it's kind of a seller's market. And in the situation that we're in right now, we tend to have more buyers than sellers, which means we have multiple offers on homes, which means the offer is important. It's not just about submitting a list price offer or, you know, 5,000 over list price or 10,000 over list price. Sometimes it's in the details of the contract. Uh, and you'll hear it called a contract. You'll hear it called a purchase agreement. You'll hear it called a sales agreement. Uh, but ultimately what the, the document is called is the, you know, one to four residential real estate contract. And, and that's what it is. It's an agreement between two parties to exchange property for consideration, right? And that consideration could be money. It could be all sorts of things. But ultimately, what you're trying to do is exchange real property between two people. And that's what the contract does. So we're going to go over the actual negotiated terms in a contract. Now, we're only going to talk about the one to four residential sales contract. We are not going to get into the addendums in any contract may have as many as five or six addendums to the contract. Each of those have additional negotiation points. So this, this is where we kind of get into the weeds of real estate. And it's why it also shocks me that so many people are willing to, you know, go into this without the advice of a trusted real estate agent because there is just so much to it. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it real quick. And this is the list of things that are just in that one to four, you know, residential, single family residential contract or, you know, one to four uh, unit contract. Uh, and the first thing, and this kind of goes in order of the paragraphs. And the first thing there it says is exclusion. So if you think about the paragraph or the contract is telling a story, paragraph one is the names of the people involved. It's the parties to the contract. So, you know, buyer Smith and seller Jones, you know, however you want to put it, you have the parties to the contract in paragraph one. And in paragraph two, we talk about what's going to be conveyed by the contract. So in, in this case, we're talking about the property and it lists the legal description of the property. So it's not enough to put one, two, three Main Street. A lot of times you will see lot one, block three of the, uh, you know, sky is the limit subdivision, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you'll see it that way. Sometimes you'll see it listed in meets and bounds. Sometimes you'll see it uh, just how it is in the survey, you know, the, the such and such abstract of the Jones survey, blah, blah, blah. It, it's the, the legal description of the property. And that's important because we want to make sure that if you're going to hand somebody hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars for a piece of property, that you are getting exactly what's spelled out in that contract. So paragraph two is about the property itself. And in that is a list of exclusions. And these are things that may be attached to the property. Uh, they may otherwise convey in the sale, but the seller wants to reserve those. Uh, where we're seeing that a lot right now is in uh, home security, home automation systems. Uh, you see it with some appliances. Um, Sometimes it'll be a, a specific chandelier or light fixture that's a family heirloom that, you know, they've got this giant chandelier in the dining room and it's, this is, we're not going to sell the chandelier. We will replace it like kind, or that's a negotiated point, right? 
uh, we will negotiate something is going to be in that place, uh, but we're taking that chandelier with us. And that's so the buyer goes in knowing what comes with the sale. Then we get into paragraph three of the contract, and in paragraph three, we talk about the actual price of the home. And the price is broken down into three points. It's the cash amount, the financed amount, and when you add those two together, you get the total sales price. Each of those is negotiable. You know, we might start with the final sales price, and that's where you say, I, I'm going to give you 385 for the house, and the, the seller's saying, no, it's 390 and you end up coming to an agreement at 387.5, and then you start looking at how much down payment, how much is going to be financed, and you fill in the contract from there. Uh, sometimes sellers want someone who has a larger amount of cash because they're, it, it's more likely that the financing goes through. Uh, and they don't spend 30 days in escrow only for the house not to sell because financing doesn't go through and then they have to put it back on the market. So, you know, all of these things are negotiable and when presenting an offer, you want to make sure that you're presenting the most favorable offer for the seller and the buyer at the same time. That's why it's a negotiation and not a dictation, right? So, uh, but the price is paragraph three and it's those three things, the cash amount, the financed amount, and the final price. Uh, and then we start getting into some other things with leases, uh, and there's a, an actual clause in there. If there is a natural resource lease, uh, which, you know, you don't think about natural resources. In North Texas, we think about the Barnett Shale, gas and oil lease, right? So as a seller, you have to turn over copies of any of those leases. And if the buyer is looking at those and they're not favorable, then they have a termination period within the contract to be able to get their earnest money back and move on find another property. And there is a termination period there that's negotiable. And then we get into the next paragraph where we start talking about title and escrow. The title company is actually negotiable. Uh, and I always tell, you know, buyers, sellers alike, we're not going to lose a deal over a title company. We have our preferred title companies. Trust me, we had Brandy from Designated Title on the show uh, several weeks back. And, you know, that's a preferred title company for me. But I have done deals with other title companies. So uh, it's okay. It, it's just a negotiated portion of the contract. So is the amount of earnest money. Now, earnest money is like a prepayment of liquidated damages. All right. So if the buyer's going to default in the contract, then the seller is going to get to keep the earnest money. And that's just like a payment for defaulting in the contract. Uh, it's damages, if you will, so that it doesn't all end up in court. Well, the amount of earnest money is negotiable. The option period is a period in the beginning of the contract where the buyer has the unrestricted right to terminate the contract and keep the earnest money. Uh, they pay a small fee for that. So the amount of that fee for the option period is negotiable. Then sometimes in the contract you can say, all right, I want 1% earnest money now and then an additional half percent uh, at the end of the option period. That's a negotiable thing. Don't see it very often, but you could see it. So the additional earnest money amount and then the time at which that has to be paid, also negotiable. And then the length of the option period. The option period is a time in which the buyer can uh, perform inspections. Uh, they have the opportunity to do more research on the home, but they're kind of holding it, if you will. It's almost like it's on layaway. Uh, it's not layaway, trust me. But it is a period of the contract where they have that unrestricted right to terminate the length of that period is negotiable. Then you get into who will pay for the title policy, a negotiable part. You can have the buyer pay for it, you can have the seller pay for it. Uh, then there's what's called a shortages amendment. And so anything that, it's, it's like additional insurance to the title commitment. Uh, and you can say, are we going to have one? That's a negotiable item is, are we going to have the shortages amendment? And then there's another item, who's going to pay for the shortages amendment? Uh, so another negotiable point. And then we get into the survey. How long does the seller have to provide the survey in the T47 to the buyer after the execution of the contract? That's a negotiable term. And then if for some reason that new survey or that survey that the seller has doesn't work for the title company, you know, the title company has a problem with it or something, then who's going to pay for the new survey? Now that's negotiable. And then you have how long to provide the new survey. So once we determine who's going to pay for it, how long do they have to get it done? Another negotiable point. And then there's objections to the title commitment. Let's say you want to purchase a property and you have a large RV trailer, you know, something like that. 
and you want to park that at the property, but the HOA says you can't do it, or there's some restriction in the title that says you can't do that. If you find that out and it does, you can't do that, or you can't put a pool in, or there's some use of the property that you want, but you can't do that because of something in the title, then you have a, uh, an objection and the ability to terminate the contract. Uh, so how long do you have for those objections? Uh, then how long to, does the seller have to provide what's called the seller's disclosure? In Texas, we have to disclose material defects in the property. So if we know that there's you know foundation issues or if we know uh, that the, uh, the roof has been repaired you know, we have to list that and disclose that information. So how long uh, does the seller have to provide that disclosure of what may be a material defect in the property? And then after the inspection, before the end of the option period, the buyer and the seller negotiate repairs to the property. So if the inspector goes in and says, hey, this is going to need to get a new roof, and the buyer says, hey, I'm not buying the house unless you put a new roof on, now that's a negotiating point. And then we get into home warranties. And uh, let me get that graphic off the screen real quick so you can see that. There we go. How much will the seller reimburse for a home warranty? Once again, this is a negotiable point. A home warranty is exactly that. It's, it's generally about a year, maybe two years long. There's a variety of companies that provide these. But for a small fee, their company will come out and fix anything that goes wrong with the house during that period. It's all up to the terms of that warranty, just like anything else. But traditionally, a seller has paid that money for that warranty to say, hey, this is a good house and I, I believe in it so much I'm going to spend, you know, up to a thousand dollars for a home warranty uh, for you. And, and it's just a way to entice buyers. But in the seller's market, we're seeing more and more buyers are actually paying for that home warranty. Uh, and then closing date is negotiable. You know, when do you want to close? A lot of times we have to give the lender and the title company enough time to do their job to make sure everything, you know, is up to speed with the lender and the title company, that there's no liens on the property, that the person buying the house qualifies for the loan. It goes through underwriting, and that takes about 30, sometimes 45 days. Depends on the title company, depends on the lender. But maybe you've had something planned at the property that you don't want to close until after a specific date, then you can actually negotiate that closing date to be farther in the future. Uh, and then when will the buyer take possession? It's kind of two choices, either at closing and funding or subject to the terms of another residential lease. And we call that a lease back, right? So traditionally, buyers have given sellers an additional three days. And we close on the first, you don't have to be out until the third. And that gives you time to pack up, move out, and then we're going to move in after that. Uh, so that's negotiable. And then there's terms in that lease that are negotiable. I'm telling you, there are so many points to negotiate, it'll make your head spin. And then seller paid settlement expenses. And this is how much is the seller going to provide for closing. And you see this a lot of times with first time home buyers that may not have sufficient cash to bring to the table. So the seller is going to pay a certain amount of the closing costs. Uh, not very often right now in this market. So it is truly a seller's market. And if you want to get your offer accepted as a buyer, then you want to know all of these terms that we've talked about here today and know how that you can submit your offer with certain things in these terms, in these paragraphs of the contract to make your offer more appealing. So tons and tons of things to negotiate there. Um, and there's a lot to go through. And remember, that is only the residential sales contract. This doesn't include the third party financing agreement, the HOA, or uh, what is it, uh, sale of property uh, managed by HOA, something like that. Uh, you've got other amendments for whether or not the property appraises. Uh, there are amendments having to do with mineral leases. There are the, the leases, the, the seller's temporary residential lease. There are tons of additional amendments to the contract. Each of those have negotiation points. So when you're buying a home, you need this information to be able to sit down with your agent and go over these points to submit that offer the best way possible. Make sure if, if you're not working with me, make sure your agent is working with you to get all of this stuff squared away so you present the best offer possible. All right. So yeah, lots of things to, to negotiate there. And that's kind of what we talked about today. And now we'll move on into the, uh, the market update. Where are we today? And if you look, 
it's actually starting to kind of swing around a little bit. We are starting to see more and more listings, uh, which is good. Uh, we need this market to balance a little bit, uh, but we do have 1,965 new listings this week. Uh, 4,539 properties went under contract. That's almost 100 more than last week. And we're still seeing a drop in the solds. Uh, a lot of that has to do with we're now right at a month to five weeks past the big winter storm, which caused a little bit of slowdown in things. I do expect to see the sold number begin to increase starting next week. Uh, as we have seen the under contract numbers increase over the last couple of weeks, those properties are going to have to sell. So we're going to see that sold number start to go up. Uh, but if you're in the market to buy or sell real estate, I would love to talk to you. Uh, give me a call. Give me an email. Uh, reach out to me on social media, and I would love to talk to you then. That's going to be the show for today. Uh, we're going to get into the next part of the home buying process next week, uh, where we talk a little bit about home inspections and what that means and what you should look for in a home inspection. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, once again, I'm Darren Clark with Century 21 Judge Fight, and I look forward to talking to you soon.